All right, y'all. So I am. Uh, I'm back at the next shop. I don't think I've really done like a formal formal walk around. I don't think y'all really seen it except for the, uh, the K20 video. I want to keep on giving y'all content while the truck is kind of sitting idle. There's things going on in the background, but there's not like a lot of motion going on right now. So, so what I'm attempting to do is try to just kind of bring some things to the channel, see how, see how y'all like it. I know the, the other how-to videos have done well. I haven't been able to find any very little, I would say, information on something like this. Y'all might not need this much information on it, but, uh, I feel like that the certain people that do need this information, it'll be helpful because I couldn't find this information anywhere. And it's not like there's a how-to, especially on these turbos here. So uh, if you can see in the background, let me get a little closer. I got my uh, my GT, uh, well, when it was factory, it was a 2056 off the Eco Diesel. It's a Garrett turbo. It's a variable geometry uh, vane turbo. Uh, and I converted it to a 2563. Um, but really what I'm gonna get into today is how to disassemble and reassemble it. Um, I'm not gonna take apart the wheel because it's been balanced. I'm not gonna separate the compressor wheel from the turbine uh, just because I want it to be as reliable as possible. It was um, converted or machined by hybrid turbos in the UK. It's uh, also turbo dynamics. Maybe they can clarify that a little bit. The work was done on the turbo by hybrid turbos. I guess it's the same company, they do different things. So it's, if, if I haven't been very clear on it, this is actually a, this is actually a hybrid turbo by hybrid turbos. So um, there's a couple of tricky things into taking this thing apart and act, especially putting it back together. I wouldn't say taking it apart is too difficult because taking anything apart isn't that hard. It's putting it back together and putting it back together right. And I'm gonna hopefully be able to show you all how to do that today. And maybe we can kind of get some tour. Maybe I'll do a little tour of the shop just because, I mean, man, this thing's awesome. I, I, can I flip it? I mean, look at that. He's got AC there. That's a small unit. He's got AC there and it's 72 degrees. So that means it's 72 degrees in here and we're in Texas. Mind you. So when I walk outside, I come through this door. It is, it is insanely hot, and the sun is just cooking hot. And anything done outside right would just be absolutely miserable. So I'm gonna go inside. I'm already sweating. This is, this is ridiculous. You gotta chill out, Texas. Give me some rain or something. Okay. So what I'm gonna start is with the turbine because that is the hardest in the turbine housing because that is the hardest to kind of get back together and get off. I don't really, I guess I could take apart the compressor, but I don't really think that needs to be clocked. So you're gonna start out with a T27, if you can get it in there. If you can't, uh, I'm not really sure what that is. What is that, a 10 millimeter? And obviously all mine aren't in. Um, I haven't clocked the, uh, the turbo right. Well, let's take this apart real quick. And obviously there's going to be a lot more a lot more screws so you're going to one two three four five six screws to remove the the turbine housing turbine housing from the 
uh, actual bearing housing. Let's see if I can set this somewhere and then y'all can actually see me removing it. I can't believe I forgot my tripod. Should just go get my tripod. Idea. Got an idea. Shit. Dude. This just stay. So we're gonna take this guy and just give her a good flip. You're gonna to wanna to do it with the turbine wheel facing up because when you pull this off, if you can watch it, there's stuff in here. You got a vein cage. Well, it's not gonna fall out, so. But either way, pull that off with it up. You got a T25 on the inside. This is your vein cage, which houses your veins. I don't know if you can see inside there. Open, closed, open, closed. You got an actuator right there that hooks up to an electric actuator. That's actually the hard part of putting this back together. So let's grab a T25. There we go, T25. These are actually a little bit tighter. I had to, to screw these down Get tight. There will be five of these to remove. It'd probably be a lot easier to clock this before with some sort of paint, um, paint marker or something. I'm not going to, I did it last time. Let's see if I can make this difficult for myself. As difficult as I'll allow it to be. Just hope I can get back together. All right, when you take this up, and, and before I get ahead of myself, there's actually a compression ring right there that seals the turbine housing to the bearing cage. So just remember that has to go back in. Um, I'll try to remember that when I put it back together. So there's the vein cage. This is what I had machined, one of the pieces I had machined by uh, hybrid turbos. So now that we get that off, this is where the fun begins. So, let me get the GoPro because this will... Okay, so you got your, you got your veins here. And this will be a better, a little easier way to, to visualize what's happening. See the, uh, the linkage at the bottom? It's all free floating. It's all held in place by uh, the vein cage and screws. Everything's moving in tandem. What happens is you remove this. The best way to remove it, I'll try, I'll see if I can do it. So let's just do it. Screw it. So this is removed now. If you pay attention, on the bottom, there's three dowel pins. You got one there, one there, one there. These dowel pins, let's turn it this way. It's all messed up now. These dowel pins right here actually have to ride on these little guides right here. These things are tiny. These little bitty guides. Let's see if you can see it a little bit better. And there's three of these. And each one of them goes on the dowel pin or whatever you want to call it. The little locating tabs or whatever. Whatever the technical name is for them. So you got all three of these. The trick is getting these back on and lining up the veins with, the, uh, with this deal beforehand. Let's see if I can do that. Okay, so remove this. And let's just, let's just forget the orientation, kinda, let's see if we can wobble all these around and do, do something stupid so I have to redo it in front of y'all. 
So now let's just say you forgot that you had to make sure this is oriented right. So what you're going to do now is make sure all these veins are in line. Oh, there goes the bell. A little roller. All these veins have to overlap each other. All these veins are overlapping each other. And what do I do? Get them all back like this. So if you got one that's kind of stuck, you just just play with them until you get them all in the right position because that's how they have to go back. There's just no other way to it. Turn this guy in, turn this guy out. And hopefully, hopefully I remember this right. Put that guy in there. And I guess it helps just to, just to turn them all in like that. So now I got all of them aligned the proper way. This is actually a lot harder to do with the camera in my hand. So, what would be the next step? Next step would be trying to get these, these little rollers correctly. So these little guys right here, correctly in place. And what I did last time is I took some uh, petroleum grease or you know anything like that. And I'll do it again just to show you all how to do it. I'm just going to use regular grease. And, and what you're doing this for is to, to make sure that the actual piece will stay where you put it without falling back out whenever you tip it back upside down. So there's one there. Petroleum jelly works great for this. Two. I didn't use grease last time, so I don't know how well this is going to work. Three. There's three of them there. Coated in the petroleum, petroleum jelly. Right? Take this, and you're going to have to align. So this guy right here is how it's got the big one in the middle. This is actually where your, uh, your, your linkage comes in from your actuator. That piece right there lines up with this piece in here. So just like that. So you got your you got your linkage in there, right? You got the little tab in the middle. It'll be different. It'll be the only one with the big one in the middle, with two small ones. And that, if you pay attention closely, there'll be a wear mark around most of them. My wear mark is right there, which tells me that this is where the dowel or th this little guy's been moving on. So I'm gonna make sure I align it right. I think I believe that's how it came off. If you can see it just barely right there. So now what I'm gonna do is the hard part. Right. Don't forget your tripods because this kind of sucks. Where did I do this last time? I think I lined these up first. Make sure they had the right alignment in. Work your way down a little bit. Hmm. 
little bit harder than I remember. These two are giving me hell. Is something wrong about these two? Okay, so that's how you want to do it right there. It is so hard to remember this and they don't show you this on video. Like there's nowhere online that shows you how to do this. So I, I finally got it and what I did is I, I opened up these veins a little bit. So, so they can actually line up a little bit better. So we've gotten this far. Don't let these come out of the guides, don't operate them too far because you'll lose them. But see that's how it works right there. When you flip this, you don't want any of these falling out. It's very crucial. So keep it pressed against the vein. Dealio, whatever you want to call it. So now they're in right there. The next step is you got to pull this up just a little bit and put all three of them on at the same time. Just enough. And and don't you know, don't let it move. And then put your, shit, I just moved it. Put your rollers on. Kind of let them sit up, maybe. You, you want to put them on before you get the vein lined up there, so. Crap, Austin's home. This is going to make things difficult while he's here. So, boom. Got that one on there. Do it like this. Boom. Got that one on there. So I got two on. Okay, I gotta get this last guy on. And once I get him on, I gotta line these things back up again because they just completely came apart. Okay, so now I got the rollers on and they're semi lined up. We'll see if I can get them lined back up. This is such a pain. And this is the easiest way that I've found to do this. So like, I know this seems hard, because it kind of is, it takes a lot of patience. But this is the easiest way that I've found to do this. So just work your way down and hope that you got them all lined up properly. There you go. Got them all on. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. Right. Now the last step is to line this guy up. And don't forget there's going to be three, make sure you got all three dowel pins in because these dowel pins can fall out. These little, these little guides for the rollers, they can fall out. You can literally pull them out. There's also a pin right there. So these are standoffs also, so this actually pushes it up away off of the, uh, the, the uh, turbine, turbine, off the turbine housing a little bit. So let's orient this right. Patience and move slow. If I drop this, I'll be pissed. Okay. All right, there we go. Veins are on. That's, that's what you're working with right there. Vein cage goes over it. Uh, it's clocked, I believe. There's dowel pins. Yeah, you know, I guess I call them dowel pins. I'm, I'm hopefully I'm calling them the right thing. There's locating tabs. I guess maybe it would be a better word. There, there, there. Are three locating tabs. Uh, you can't misalign this because literally the screw holes won't line up. 
So like you get three that line up and there's nothing there. So then you spin it again, see if you get the correct orientation. Now you got the, there's one missing here. Then you turn it again. There you go. All of them lined up. Make sure she's free and spins. Okay. And you'll just basically do that in reverse. So there's your turbine. Um, I'm not going to show you how to take out the compressor wheel because honestly, if you don't have the equipment to rebalance it or you don't put it back together right, <clears throat> you're going to have more problems. Uh, I'm not sure the torque values on this. I guess I can list them once I find them. Uh, maybe if somebody knows the torque values on uh, the vane cage screws and the turbine housing bolts, let me know. If I can find them before you all let me know. Um, I'll post them so right around here there is a uh, basically a compress a compressible metal gasket it's just to keep this thing sealed off uh, so remember that has to go on either you can I'm pretty sure you can reuse them I've reused them never had a problem or you can just get a new one uh, either way and it sits in this groove and the turbine housing right there, that flat groove. Um, another thing you need to remember is these are clockable, but some of them have a locator pin. There's the little hole for the locator pin right there. Mine, for some reason, doesn't have the locating pin. I don't know what happened to it. Maybe in the machine process it was removed. And you know what? I don't see a, a hole for it. So I have to get mine right. Oh, there's it. There it is right there. So I guess the pin wasn't reinstalled. But that's fine because I can use that hole, that hole right there to line up with the turbine housing. So let's put on the turbine housing now. Yeah, so that's how it goes right there. Now the compressor housing is, uh, is not clocked right. So let's do this. And, uh, you know, you can flip it over now. Flip it over. That locating tab is pretty handy. Because there's literally no way to mess it up. I'm going to have to get a locating tab from there. Well, I have a couple other. I have like two or three turbos, so that's not a problem. I'm going to take the compressor housing off also because that has to be clocked and it's not clocked right now per, uh, correctly. Some of these are going to be hard to get to if you don't have the right. So these are 10 millimeter, and I'll get the torque for these also. So that's secured, it's not going anywhere. Next thing we're going to do is the uh, turbine housing. Sorry, next thing we're going to do is the compressor housing. We're just going to remove this, there's not really much to see that you all haven't seen. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this guy. Just show you all what's behind it. And what y'all need to remember, gasket wise and stuff, whenever you take this apart. Um, really the only reason you're going to have to do this is if you are rebuilding the turbo. Or you send your turbo off to get machined. Um, you obviously we usually don't need to send the turbine housing in because that's a lot of weight. A lot of extra weight shipping that they don't need that they don't need because the veins, uh, vein cage is really really the main thing they need to machine on this type of turbo. Take this apart.
So another thing to remember whenever you do this is, is also be careful. You know, you don't wanna, you definitely don't wanna drop it um, with this stuff exposed. So you're gonna wanna flip it over. And remove it just like that. Uh, yeah, so, so the seals right here. There's a rubber seal in here that generally gets replaced on a rebuild. Uh, I need a pick. Generally, this will be replaced. It's a cheap part. I'm pretty sure they're all the same. There it is. I don't want to take it all the way out. Um, just keep it clean. You can go. You can. I mean, I'm sure you can reuse them. But with a rebuild kit, you're going to get that anyway. And there it is. I mean, that's taking apart and then re-putting it back together. And then let's see if I can locate it. You know what? Maybe it was located right. So there's another locating tab right there, if you can see it. Um, I believe it goes like this. Finally. Just doing a video on this, taking it apart and reassembling it. So I got a clocked right now, before it wasn't clocked right. Um, there's only two ways to clock it because like I said, it's got a locating pin right there. When you're putting it back on, careful with your wheel, your compressor wheel. It's very delicate compared to the turbine wheel. What'd you bring me, buddy? Nothing. Very YouTube friendly. What'd you get in the mail? That's about it. I'll get you all the torque values on that. Pretty simple.